get ready for the most exciting message from God that you have ever heard. Now set your heart and mind. Be open to the new move of God for these last days before the rapture of the church. You see, God has a plan, a plan that he could have revealed at any time in the past, but has waited until now, in 1989, to turn loose his power in an unprecedented manner against the devil and all his forces. Praise God, that's exciting. So listen carefully to this prophetic message, looking to the Holy Spirit for a witness as he is the author of it. Yes, he's truly the author of it. And he will confirm what is said and establish it in your heart as you look to him. Now, here's what God is saying to the church, the whole church, everyone, everywhere in the world at this time. God has a plan to free your city of all evil spirits. I want to say that again. God has a plan to free your city or your community of all evil spirits. Well, that's the title of a prophetic message given in the fall of 1988 that belongs not only to Albuquerque, New Mexico, but to cities and communities everywhere. Now, this is a new thing that God is doing in dealing with evil spirits. So God called Albuquerque, New Mexico, to be a city of his glory, actually to be a demonstration city to the world of his glory. The glory that will be manifested in this city is being set free from the presence and the work of all evil spirits and be filled with the presence of God's angels and the Holy Spirit. Of course, if anyone would look at this city of Albuquerque in the close of 1988, well, he'd see anything but a city of God's glory. For at that time, the hand of the devil was the one that was most visible, well, as it is in cities everywhere. Now, New Mexico is officially known as the land of enchantment, which is the title literally given by the devil himself. But you know, what was past is past, for this city is now in the process of being changed in a drastic manner. And within a short time, I don't know exactly how long, but a fairly short time, this city will be transformed, totally transformed by the glory of God. Now what's being stated here is not being said by a prophet of God or even one who has a gift of prophecy. I make only one claim that mornings during praise and worship, after pulling down evil spirits from the skies above Albuquerque, I daily experienced a heavy spirit of prophecy upon me for several weeks. And you know, I prophesied back in the fall of 1988 nearly incredible things to soon come to this city, that God has already ordained, and they're only dependent upon the people of God cooperating. Many of us in the ministry here have heard prophecies from various sources that spoke of a great and unique work of God coming to this city. I just talked to a brother the other day that mentioned this. So what is being said here isn't at all new, but does have details of this great and amazing work of God. Now, it isn't going to come with a bang that, you know, suddenly explodes, but it will come as rapidly as God's people rise to the occasion and obey God. So here are some things that God has ordained for this city and also to be an example to other cities and communities everywhere. Now in the beginning, we'll find people are getting saved more easily and at a faster rate. Now who is seeing this? The churches that have caught God's vision and are running with that vision. The dead and lukewarm churches will stay dead and lukewarm for the time being. Actually, men and the devil will still be in charge of what belongs to God. But you know, before long, this will begin to change. Some of these churches will begin to catch the fire of God and will leave dead works behind. Then more and more will come into the move of God, at least enough to get themselves moving. But where the leadership of a church will turn to God and hook up with him, I'll tell you the fire will start in those churches. So many churches will grow, some will even explode, and some who isolate themselves from God's grace, what will happen to them? They'll draw up, shut up, 
and dry up. Now, that's not my language. I got that from the Holy Spirit. You know, God won't force his blessings upon anyone. But the increasing move of his power and glory, he will even draw so many whose minds are elsewhere. Church building, buildings will become filled and overflowing. See, in these days, the building of those you know, great ed edifices will all be over, for church building must take place quickly and allow room for expansion wherever possible. Up till now, a church that had two or three services on Sunday morning is considered an expanding one, and indeed so. But what about daily services to accommodate the great throngs wanting to come? Where will all these people come from? Practically all will be new believers as the rate of those being saved will be constantly increasing. Can you believe that a time is coming when the majority of the people of this city and cities in so many places will be born again and almost all baptized with the Holy Spirit? You know, it won't be religious tradition that these people come to church for. It will be to worship and glorify God and be in His almighty presence. So that will be the day of healings and miracles almost unprecedented anywhere at any age in the past. The time will come when people who are sick, maimed, deformed, no matter what is wrong with them, they'll all be set free, listen carefully now, simply by sitting in the presence of the glory cloud of God. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Praise God. Now, there will certainly be great preaching and teaching, yet the increasing emphasis in church services will be on a real worship of God in spirit and in truth. And there will be meetings so large at times that only the skies of New Mexico will be the dome. See, we've never seen a gathering of believers here in the tens of thousands, but those days are coming. And we'll see the body of Christ draw together as never before, except in the early church. Well, what's been described so far is the glory of God in dealing with his people and those yet not saved. Now, while this is the greatest of what is to come, oh, there's so much more. Because so few of us have ever witnessed the power of God laying over a whole city, it may be somewhat difficult at first to grasp what his power will do to sin. But the time will come when all of the bars in Albuquerque will go out of business. The lack of business and public outcry will force them out. Crime will drop to an unheard of low. And of course, you know, this is the news that makes national news, and it will make national news. Other city and government officials who will come here to learn firsthand how such an amazing thing has happened. How about the crime rate dropping down? You know, the Holy Spirit quickly me to understand they'll scratch their heads in amazement as no formulas will be offered except Jesus. Praise God. That's formula enough. Well, the whole concept of morality will be Bible-based with a focus directly on the Bible. Prostitution will be gone, porno houses completely closed, as well as the video filth offered to the public. And once again, for the first time in decades, the elderly will be able to walk about in a high degree of safety. Thank God for that. But here's something that really excites me especially. A great revolution will take place in the school system from preschool through college level. Daily prayer will be everywhere by the voluntary desire of students who will largely be Christians and vocal for Christ. Much subject matter will be dealt with from biblical positions, causing students to see and know the goodness of God. And even in classes where atheistic views used to predominate, the students themselves, even where teachers may not be willing, will turn viewpoints and discussions toward God. And the teaching of atheism by practice or even by inference will be totally gone. Christian parents in the vast majority will demand this, and school boards in this vicinity will no longer be made up of non-Christians or lukewarm believers. And city and county officials here, and also in state government, will know the enormity of the work of God, and almost all of them will speak openly of it. 
Now, I got this from the Spirit of God. Understand that. In brief, the attitudes of people everywhere will drastically change. You know, optimism will predominate even among most remaining unbelievers. But the profession of faith of believers will be in the air everywhere. The name of Jesus will be glorified to the horror of a few hard-shell unbelievers. Prison population will decrease somewhat, as many less will commit crimes in this area, and the rehabilitation of prisoners here will be successful to the point of doubtful acceptance of these statistics elsewhere. Well, you can see this will be an amazing city to behold by former residents who return to visit. But what will be so amazing to them? Mostly the change in the attitudes and the words of the people. And the whole business climate of this city will experience what will be regarded as unbelievable by business people of other cities. You know, instead of a dog-eat-dog -dog spirit of competition, there will be a friendship and cooperative hands extended. Praying for God to bless one's competitor will be common in that time. Many other changes will take place in this great city of God. But what is it now? What is it that will cause God to move with such unprecedented results? And this is what we need to understand. There are two factors involved, two factors one as important as the other. First, God is and has been in the process of raising up a militant army in this area whose motto is, we'll take this city for God. These soldiers of Christ are not only going forth to do the works of Jesus, as in John 14, 12, to do the works that he did and even greater works, but they're also great prayer warriors interceding constantly for the move of God. And second, this is just as important, second, there must be a whole new approach in how we deal with evil spirits. But let's begin by asking this question. Should we merely bind the devil or get rid of him altogether? I want to repeat that again. Should we merely bind the devil or get rid of him altogether? What should we do? Should we bind a small portion of evil spirits as we observe their activity, or ought we get rid of the whole bunch of them around us completely? Now, just what is the difference between these two situations? Now, brothers and sisters, this is what you and I need to understand clearly. If all we ever do is to bind those particular spirits as we come across their activity, you know over 99% of them are still loose. And even those evil spirits we do bind do not remain permanently bound. Or even if we identify them as we observe certain predominant spirits by their work and then bind them, this is still very limited. But on the other hand, if we get rid of the devil's forces altogether from our area, hold on to your hat now, spiritually speaking, it will be like entering the Garden of Eden. Oh, think about that. Praise God. The entire spiritual atmosphere where we live will be totally changed. So you see, this is what the new move of God is that God has for us to enter into, to daily pull down the spirits of the rulers of the darkness of this world and the principalities and permanently cast them out of our area. We'll see whole sections of the city taken from the enemy almost overnight as the skies above become clear of the forces of darkness. So as the rulers of the darkness of this world and the principalities are pulled down and cast out in the name of Jesus, their hold on any area will be broken. Well, that's when the real success of bold believers will be seen and known everywhere, even in many foreign lands. As believers diligently carry out their work, the power of evil from above will daily shrink, and the skies will be continually filled with more and more of the angels of God, and we're seeing that happen right now. Along with this move 
comes a greater corresponding presence of the Holy Spirit until he finally covers the entire area as a blanket and remains day and night until Jesus comes for the church. How dramatic that is. Well, it's this combined work of believers in doing the works we're called to do and clearing the skies of all evil spirits that will enable God to do what he has so long to do but has not had the opportunity before. Now, as you can see, God is not in charge of how soon these things take place. He's ready right now. It's the faithful who determine the move of God to accomplish these things. Yet, I can assure you, it will come to pass as believers enter into this work, for it's God ordained. But how soon is up to us. The power of God in the early church was great, but the skies over the cities then remain full of the forces of evil. Now, are you seeing that evil spirits in the midst of us are not the real problem? They simply take their orders from those located in the skies above. And when we pull down and cast out the actual rulers of evil, those in our midst must go also. Yet the real victory will not be won by the majority of believers, but by a small minority who catch God's vision and faithfully join in. So just how, now I want to bring up this other question, return to it. Just how do we rid our cities of the power of evil spirits? Well, it's not a complicated matter. It's amazingly simple to do, as believers in many places are finding out. The power or authority to do this has been available for almost 2,000 years since Jesus went to the cross and rose from the dead. But it's in this last moment of time prior to the rapture of the church that God is calling upon believers everywhere to rise up in the name of Jesus by the authority vested in his all-powerful name and clear the skies above of all evil spirits. Now, it isn't necessary to get large groups together to do this. The pulling down and casting out these forces can be done by believers right where they live with a small amount of time each day. Now, here's what to do. Choose a time of the day most convenient with you and do this, speaking in this manner as you begin each day's authority. You say, I speak to the rulers of the darkness of this world and the principalities in the skies above me. And I say to you, in Jesus' name, I pull you down. In Jesus' name, I pull you down. And you keep repeating this command of pulling them down for at least 10 to 15 minutes so as to issue this powerful command two or 300 times daily, speaking in authority and visualizing the results in your mind continually faithfully in this daily, and when each day's pulling down is complete, say to them, I cast all of you out of this area in Jesus' name never to return. This means that every day there are fewer evil spirits remaining in your area. Now, this is all there is to this simple but remarkably powerful exercise that will have a profound and beneficial effect upon a city or community in ridding it of all evil forces. Now, this alone would have a great impact for good, but when you couple this condition with the skies above being filled with the angels of God, the spiritual atmosphere will be charged with the power of good and not evil. Then we conclude this daily exercise of authority by praising and worshiping God and thanking Him that His angels fill the atmosphere above us. What will God do for your city or your community? Well, His work in each place is somewhat u unique, largely according to the needs of the people. Now, He'll do a rather different kind of work in a rural area than in a large modern city, and a somewhat different work where poverty is a great problem. But there's one thing we can all be certain of. God will do what most needs doing. He'll meet the real needs of the people. 
Therefore, it isn't necessary for any of us to focus on what God will do for us, but to devote our full attention upon what He's called us to do. So you can live in a godly environment where the whole community will be affected by the power of God. Now remember, in this great and powerful dealing with evil spirits, we don't pray, we don't fast, we don't bind, nor do we name various types of spirits. Instead of these things, which do do some good, yet our enemy is still remains in our midst. So now we command the two highest categories of evil spirits that God calls us to deal with, and we cast them out permanently after many repeated commands to pull them down each day, continually reducing their number in our midst. So the new work of God for us, now that doesn't mean we discontinue in what people have been doing in dealing with evil spirits, but to add to whatever has been done so that cities and communities can become free of any need to deal with such spirits. Well, can you picture living without you ever again being plagued by the works of evil spirits? Well, I can, and you will. Now, this is a greater work than Jesus ever did in his earthly ministry, as he was never called to clear any cities of the presence and work of evil spirits. So get others to join with you. The more that take part, the faster the results of the work of God will come. You know, it's the live churches that God is moving in, where he is truly glorified by powerful praise and worship. So I urge you, give yourself over to God. Be a person of his power, going forth to bless people everywhere. The results will be amazing to you, and your whole city or community can be turned around by you and those who faithfully join with you. This really is a new move of God for this time that's here now. So don't miss it. Don't let the devil or lukewarm or doubting people talk you out of what God has for you. Instead, start today pulling down and casting out these forces of evil. And as you begin to do this, look to the Holy Spirit to lead you to others, to share with them what you're doing for the cause of Christ. Now, hold on your hat once more. We have another great surprise for you just as it was when the Holy Spirit first quickened this to me. As you follow the instructions given, there will be an increase of your effectiveness ten times in permanently getting rid of evil spirits. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30, has this promise for us. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. Now this, of course, is when two fully agree together. So as you come into agreement with the following exercise, which is exactly what I have been doing since the Lord gave me this prophetic message, then you'll increase your work ten times. See, as you agree by repeating with me the very words on this tape that I command and be in faith, Picturing in your mind what you say, God will credit your work with a tenfold increase in final result. I, th I think that's outstanding of God to do it this way. Now, this means that you can accomplish with me ten times as much as you could by yourself alone. This is fully scriptural to do this. You can count on God honoring your efforts as there is a permanent anointing on the words of authority in this tape. So let's begin. But first, let me explain this to you. As we pull down these forces together, each time I say, Hallelujah, I'll change the pulling down command slightly. It's helpful to do it this way. Now, <clears throat> I'll start with my part of this agreement first. Please turn this tape over. <laughs> 